They believe the Jesus in us because they see it lived out in our lives. Right. And the Bible says that we are confirming the story of Jesus with our lives. Mm -hmm. And I love how you said you live it. Yeah. Because I know for me, like you said, like preaching on stages, my words have helped me communicate to Christians mm -hmm. really well. My words have helped me communicate to Christians how they need to evangelize and live. But my life has helped me show Jesus to non-Christians. A hundred percent, Your life, yes. that makes the difference. Yes. People far from God. Jenny asked this question on Instagram. How do I explain faith to an adamant unbeliever? You don't. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you know, I found interesting is that she used the word adamant. Yes. So to me... She's already tried. She already <laughs> tried. Yeah. But if someone, if someone would say that that's that adamant, then they were hurt somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's right? true. So nobody is an adamant unbeliever that hasn't experienced hurt. There's a reason, right, mm -hmm. that they're adamant about it. But even if just thinking about sharing our faith, and I know people ask that and people want to know how to do that. I just think we make it more complicated than I it really think has to so be. Too. So for me, I mean, again, and you guys can speak to this, but I, for me, I just think it's more important to live it than yep. to say it. Absolutely. Can they tell? Can you? They you tell. I remember this one time I was sitting, honestly, with a bunch of girlfriends at lunch, and we were like, like here we are, mm -hmm. and we were laughing, and we were having so much fun, and at the end of it, this person comes up to me and said, can you tell me? what it is about you guys. Right. Because mm. I just have never seen happy people like that, mm -hmm. like a real joy. Mm -hmm. Well, then that led into a conversation and the next thing you know, they're in my world. And so to me, it's wow. it's not that complicated. Yeah. It's throwing faith in a, in a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I have this um, tattoo that says she rises. And so oftentimes people go, oh, what does that say? And I say, well, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about women. And immediately if I'm talking to her, they're like, what does it say? Yeah. And I say, well, it means that when dark times are around, she rises. And that, really? Yeah. And so then it just starts a conversation. I believe that how we live our lives is the best way to demonstrate to people what living for Jesus is like. Um, when we are looking for a great restaurant, we want to read all the reviews. We want to see what other people have experienced. If we went to that restaurant, what would our experience be? So we see what other people's experiences have been just the same. We. Our experience is what people want to know. If they came to know Jesus, what would it be like? If I came to Jesus, what kind of life would I be living? What kind of joy would I have? What kind of peace would I have? And our life is like a recommendation for something we experienced. And it lets people know what is available to them if they too came and tried to see the person of Jesus. We spiritualize everything. And then it's like we're no good for what's here on earth, mm -hmm. right? And we do have to just live this thing out in front of them. Right. I love how you say most of them have been hurt somewhere right. because I'll I'll talk to some people. I will talk to some people and they'll say things like, um, "Yeah, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God." And I'm saying you work too hard not to believe in God. You believe in God. Right? <laughs> you know, you work too hard. Where have you been hurt? Mm. And the first thing they would say, yeah, I'm done with church people. Well, what, what did God do to you? Exactly. You know, it's people. They turn their back away from God because of what people have done. Mm -hmm. And so when we can be that demonstration mm -hmm. in front of them, then they'll want to hear what you have to say, mm -hmm. right? I think so. You know, I, I, and I just think this is actually what your husband's pretty exceptional at. I think of the relating to people who don't. Yeah. No, God. I was getting on an airplane one time and I had one of Joel's books with me. So you can tell him I read his book. Anyway, <laughs> getting on the plane and the flight attendant says, who says, oh, I watch him. I like how he talks. And mm -hmm. so then I engage with her. She's not a Christian, mm -hmm. is still on that journey, mm -hmm. but open yeah. to a conversation. So he's, he's relatable. He, he sowed the seeds. I get to add a little water to mm -hmm. the conversation mm -hmm. without beating somebody up. And I just mm -hmm. think that's why it's not that hard. Yeah. And God gets to bring the increase. Exactly. exactly. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go into all the world and preach the good mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to, but we put so much pressure on ourselves that it's up to us. Right. Mm -hmm. But you, I believe what you said is that one waters, yeah. one plants, one right. waters, but God brings God. the increase. Yes. And so, so if you're not so concerned about, you know, I got me a soul today, I caught me a fish today. I got, mm -hmm. But just like you said, live in your life knowing that, man, when you're just throwing around the joy and doing your best to help others, God is the one that brings yes. the people to Him. Yeah. And I think that's just, that just takes the pressure off. I think 
sharing your faith is so individual. God's got a different calling on all of our lives. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel. And I believe that God will move you in the direction, bring people across your path that He wants you to love and you to share His love with. So I just encourage you, if God puts it on your heart, show love. Tell Him about Jesus. Tell Him, tell them what He's done for you. Because I am a pastor of a church, I feel weird always having to talk to people about Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I know this sounds very odd, but that's what I do. Mm -hmm. right. So when I go to the store, or I begin to talk to someone, I'm not, I don't go, where do you go to church? Yeah. Where do you go? Because it's like, am I recruiting for my church? Right. You know, I mean, I, right. I, I have to admit, I feel kind of funny. Yeah. I just want to be a normal person. Oh, I'm normal. I love God. How are you? Yeah. You know, but I have a friend sometimes that goes with me, and that's her question. <laughs> Where do you go to church? <laughs> what did it? Do it or did it? Which is great, but she doesn't feel the same pressure I do. Right. right. So, you know, I think we have to kind of customize it and make you it our do. own. Yeah, you, you do. But you again, you got to be spirit led because if not, yeah you're going to throw some people off. It's a turn off to some, and then it may be something that right. somebody else needs. Like, I may need to be invited to church, but this person over here just wants to smile. Yeah. So if you go with this person, you know, with, where do you go to church? I don't go to church and don't want to even talk to you. Right. But if you come in with a smile and be nice. I remember one time I was um, in a grocery store. I'm a giver at heart. My husband and I, we love giving. Yes. And I was in a grocery store, and a young lady was on the phone and she was talking to her mother. Her mother wanted her to do her hair. And I'm all in the conversation. <laughs> I had nothing to do with the conversation. Because you do hair. Because I do hair. Uh -huh. So she's, she was like, Ma, I don't feel like doing your hair today. You know, just talking. And when she got off the phone, I said, no, you know it's not going to take you long to do your mother's hair. Why don't you just go ahead and do it? And so she was looking at me and we just laughed and started talking. And then I paid for her food you know, in the line, never told her about church, never said anything. Yeah. I just said, hey, just want to be a blessing to you and pay for your stuff. Well, about two years later, I needed someone to come braid my hair. Someone posted it and she was the one that showed oh, up. I didn't know it was her. And she said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no. She said, you pay for my groceries in the grocery oh, store and you told me to go and do my mom's hair. And it's like, whoosh. Yeah. So now that gave me an opportunity to minister to her, yeah. to right. tell her about this Jesus that I serve. And like, you need to get planted in a good church. Yeah. But if I would have went at her, you know, totally wrong in the beginning, that could have been a turnoff. Right. So you have right. to be sensitive to know how to identify moments to w when you can say what you need to say. I think something that applies to all of us in every environment, because he's already said this, is to be loving and kind always in every environment that you walk into. And I do, at the same time, I do think there are moments when the Spirit of God leads us into a situation because we have the answer that maybe this, this, the struggle this person is having. I remember one time I told this story that I was, um, I had four different boarding passes on an airplane because every time I went to the seat, I had to change seats with someone. And I'm getting frustrated by the time I finally get to my seat, but it turns out I'm gonna ultimately be sitting next to someone who is struggling in their marriage and I can actually help with that. We're supposed to be salt and light, right? So, you know, we were laughing last night. It's like, we're supposed to make people thirsty, not kill them. Not, not make them not like, over make water. Them gag with all the yeah, salt. Like, I like, can't eat that. Or yeah. add flavor, like salt adds flavor. flavor. Like exactly. those women saw you and they're like, right. what is it about you guys? You have more flavor. Right. Or what is this about you? I'm gonna come to this event. You have more flavor. Like your salt adds flavor, it adds right. joy. If we were filled with the spirit, then what people would be seeing us produce is love and joy and mm -hmm. faithfulness, kindness, patience, self-control. Like they are attracted yes. to, the Bible talks about how we are a sweet aroma, mm -hmm. you know, like they would sense it, they would smell it, they would mm -hmm. feel the difference. You wouldn't, I don't know what I think about this word explain Jesus, because because I understand that we need to explain a lot of things about Christianity, we explain a lot of things about faith, yep. but I don't know that I've ever led someone to Jesus by explaining no, Jesus. or arguing. No. Well, you can't, they, they're, the Bible talks about how that's foolishness unto them. They can't even understand right. those things. And so for you to go in and try to explain who Jesus is, right. they're not gonna receive They wanna that. see it. They wanna right. see it. It's like, tell me, what did Jesus do for you? But if you would know the difference, 
Yeah. Like people know the difference. People aren't dumb. They know yeah. the difference. My I, a lot of my close friends are not Christians, and they know the difference. Mm -hmm. So they knew Hosanna, like before Lori Crouch knew Hosanna. Right. <laughs> right. They knew a different version of Hosanna. They have no question that I'm a different woman. Mm -hmm. They have no question. And for a lot of them, I'm the only saved person in their life. Mm -hmm. But they know that I'm a great friend, loyal friend, joyful, giving. Right. And when they're in a crisis, they come to me. Like we have this. We know we, we don't just not have unsaved friends. Right. We have lots of them. Mm -hmm. And they believe the Jesus in us because they see it lived out in our lives. Right. And the Bible says that we are confirming the story of Jesus with our lives. Mm -hmm. And That's I love good. how you said you live it. Yeah. Because I know for me, like you said, like preaching on stages, my words have helped me mm -hmm. communicate to Christians mm -hmm. really well. My words have helped me communicate to Christians how they need yeah. to evangelize and live. But my life has helped me show Jesus to non-Christians. A hundred percent. Your life yes. that makes the difference. Yes. People far from God. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.